Hey, good day everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Happy Wednesday to you. Now the rain is still adding up from the atmospheric flooding in the Northwest and it is problems, maybe possibilities of even landslides, especially for Washington. And we have this Alberta Clipper that's gonna put some major snowfall in the Midwest and some thunderstorms. At the same time, there is a severe weather threat for the South and even a chance for tornadoes. Plus this will carry up to the Northeast and it is bringing heavy rainfall Chances for snow, not much, and damage in winds. But the second system that we still have coming, and it is moving further east, so it is more chances for snow along the coast of the northeast. That one's going to bring major snowfall to the northeast as well. If you've never been here before, hello, my name is Mark. I do upload every single day, just not Friday from sundown to sundown Saturday. That's Sabbath. But I'll make sure you're covered on whatever weather event we do have coming. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you know when my videos do come out. Thank you so much for your support. If you do use social media, all I ask is share this information as I share to you. Help another know what's going on. And this video is going to be shorter, guys. I just want to concentrate just on what's going on with this storm in the U.S. So if you do like the shorter videos, do me a favor, hit that like button. Let me know you do like it, and I will continue to keep them shorter. Now, for those that don't know, an Alberta Clipper is also known as Alberta Low, Alberta Cyclone, or Alberta Lee Cyclone. It's a Canadian Clipper, or simply a Clipper. It's a fast-moving, low-pressure system that originates near the Canadian province of Alberta, just east of the Rocky Mountains. And it does go east, southeastward, across southern Canada and the northern United States, to the northeast. Now, real quick, there's a hydraulic outlook for the precipitation coming in for the northwest for Oregon and Washington. But Washington has a landslide threat. Heavy rainfall has led to an increased threat of landslides in western Washington. There is a website that you can check and see what's going on with your area and how much is expected. I do have that link for you. And here's the page right here. So I will put the link in the description for you so you can go follow and see what's going on with the landslides. All you do is come here and click on Hydraulic Outlook and it tells you everything you need to know. Now, if you look at the 500 millibar height, you can see a system forming up here by North Dakota, and you can see with the winds, they're not too fierce. You get some winds from Montana, you get some winds from Wyoming. And as it carries to the Midwest, it's only Western South Dakota and Western Nebraska, and it does move towards the Ohio Valley, but the winds calm down. Then the winds will pick back up until Friday evening, going into Saturday morning for the Northeast, so there's a chance for damaging winds for you as well, as this Alberta Clipper moves through. Then we got another one coming in on Sunday morning, and it's going to bring even more fierce damage and winds. That's where your big damage and wind threat is as all this system comes through. Now, this is going to bring some damage and wind gusts as well. And not only that, we have a severe weather threat in the south. Now, there is chances for blizzard conditions in the Midwest. Blizzard conditions is only 35 miles per hour winds and certain visibility. I don't think it'll be blizzards all the time. There'll be portions where you might get an hour of it, but then it'll clear back up. The dam shows that there is chances for 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts on intercoastal northeast. And you do see there is chances for 50 miles per hour wind gusts, even for 60 for Oklahoma in the south. And we do have a severe weather threat in the south. Now the GFS confirms that there's 50, even high 50 miles per hour wind gusts in this section, but it's not showing anything for the severe weather in the south. Same thing with the Euro, it shows 50 to 60 miles per hour wind gusts. It's not showing anything in the south, and it's only showing a little bit for the northeast. Now, there is some severe weather today, and it has grown. You have your marginal in the green, and this slight risk that has grown now in this yellow. And there is for tornadoes. You have a big 2% chance for tornadoes in all this green, and a 5% chance for tornadoes in this brown. And there is a wind. So winds should be picked up on the models, and that's only being picked up on the NAM 3K. You have a 5% chance for damaging winds in this brown, and a 15% in this yellow. And there is a chance for hail as well, even some significant hail in this black. And, and right here in this gray section is your chance for significant hail through this storm. And for your tornado threat for today, here is your cities and your states for the 2% and the 5%. The link will be in the description. That way you can follow the severe weather threat as it updates. Remember, the links are always in the description to help save you time, guys. So if you go with the NAM 3K, which is following with National Weather Service, that there is a 50 to 60 miles per hour damage and wind threat for Oklahoma and the Panhandle of Texas. And you can see where the other yellow and gold is. That's 50 to high 50 miles per hour wind gusts, almost 60. 60 would be in the red. So NAM is showing that it will be some damage and winds, but it won't be that high of an event. But it does show it for northern Wisconsin, also for Illinois and Indiana. Plus the northeast, you can see the 50s and the 60s that is expected 
by the NAM 3K. Now for today, there is a severe thunderstorms possible in this yellow section, according to National Weather Service, where your thunderstorms reaching all the way up in this dotted green section. Regular rain here and mixed precipitation in all this purple, where you're definitely getting snow in the white. Now for tomorrow, this is still going to carry over to the southeast and the mid-Atlantic, still showing no severe weather for tornadoes, winds, or hail for tomorrow. But you can see here, now you have heavy flash flooding and rain possible in the west, and you have a chance for freezing rain in this pink line section here. This is for tomorrow. You also got heavy snow possible in these gray sections here with snow in all this white. Everybody else is going to be mixed precipitation. Then as you go to Saturday, it's still going to be some rain for South Florida. Matter of fact, some storms are passing through, and there is a chance for a low-pressure system to form up, front-induced, and head out to the Atlantic as well as the northeast and the mid-Atlantic. The storms will carry over, but there's no severe weather with it. And from Friday morning to Saturday morning, you have a chance now for snow in all this white and freezing rain still possible in this pink section right here. With mixed precipitation in Ohio Valley and the intercoastal northeast with rain and thunderstorms coming for y'all. And your seven-day precipitation forecast does show not only unbelievable rainfall in the northwest, which is anywhere from four to five to seven, even 10 inches of rainfall in this yellow expected. That's 10 to 15. That's a lot of possible snowfall, but a lot of flooding as well. And you have all this blue, that is an inch of rainfall, and this pink here, that is up to two inches of rainfall. Now with snow falling, 10 to one ratio, that could be up to 20 inches. That's a lot of snow. And you can see how it goes towards the northeast with one inches of rainfall, and this pink with two inches of rainfall expected. All this dark blue here is all half an inch of rainfall in the green, less than half an inch. Now according to NAM 3K for the next two and a half days on what your snowfall could be, you can see how it's anywhere from eight inches to a foot for northern Minnesota, even northern North Dakota with everybody else getting maybe a little over an inch. And then it gets way less as you go further down Minnesota or northern Iowa, even for Wisconsin. That's because the daytime heating comes in and really starts to mess up the snowfall. But as it comes back on a wraparound later that evening, it will start dropping some snowfall for y'all. Next five days with GFS on your snowfall rates, you can see the heavy, very heavy snowfall in northern Minnesota as well as Canada. You can get anywhere from 18 inches to two feet. So it's really gonna be a big blast for y'all. But southern Minnesota, you do have a chance to get anywhere from one to two inches and northern, northwestern Wisconsin. Where everybody else in Iowa or maybe upper Illinois might get an inch. And as the system swings through the intercoastal of the Northeast, it is going to bring one to five inches in certain areas for the Northeast. Once again, it all depends on the time of day it's going to pass through your area. Now, the full five days, Northern Iowa does eventually do get some snow, one to two inches across Northern Iowa. Wisconsin starts going down to one to two inches down Southern Wisconsin. And now Western Michigan is starting to get in on some snowfall, possibly some lake effect snow. And you still have the snowfall in the northeast for the intercoastal. And you can see the Ohio Valley really don't get much because it gets daytime heating as it travels across you. Now that is a Euro. The GFS is showing that with a daytime heating, Iowa, there's no chance for you to get any of this snowfall as well as southern Wisconsin or anybody in Ohio Valley. It confirms the, the heavy snowfall in Michigan. But it does show that the northeast, it will be overnight into the early morning hours, and you will be getting snowfall because of the cold temperatures. And you can see this with NAM 3K, that you get a nasty little frontline storm coming as all this snow comes down later this evening. And as it goes into the overnight hours, that's when you start getting some good snow. But once the daytime heating comes in for tomorrow, then it starts dissipating your chance for any snowfall for southern Minnesota or northern Iowa. It's mainly because the daytime heating is really gonna ruin that chance for you. And you can see that with our dew points, as it goes way up to the Midwest, there's not really a big chance for southern Minnesota, southern Wisconsin, or Iowa to get much snowfall because of these warm dew points. Then as tomorrow morning comes in and these dew points move over, that's when you have your chance to get some snowfall on your wraparound. Now these dew points will also bring your severe weather threat that you have for today into this afternoon. And it will go into Louisiana a little bit before it finally dissipates as this cold front pushes everything south, southeast, and it does affect the northeast as well. Now as the storm goes towards the northeast for Friday, you do have a lot of dew points along the coast. But as you go into the overnight on Friday into the early morning for Saturday, now you can see your dew points 
don't stick around for the full northeast. It does go up to the mid-Atlantic, Maryland, Delaware, along the coast. But now Jersey, New York, Long Island, even western Connecticut could see some snowfall as this comes by. You see how it stays pretty warm temperatures in these dew points, but this would be freezing temperatures with this cold air. And these warm dew points isn't affecting all the way to the northeast. So there is a good chance for portions of y'all in the northeast to see some snowfall now. And I believe this will continue to move over a little bit more and it could be a lot of snowfall. I believe that the data on the models will catch up. But as you watch the snow coming through, you can see who's gonna get snowfall, even the major snowfall. And it dissipates quickly for the Midwest because we go to the daytime heating as the storm passes by the Northeast. And they only get a little bit from that first one. Now when a second storm comes in, that's when the snow is gonna start adding up for the Northeast. And this is according to the GFS. The GFS is picking up more snowfall. According to the GFS, the full seven days does bring very heavy snowfall to Northern Minnesota, anywhere is from 12 to 18 inches. You see all in the blue is all one to five inches of snowfall. And it will affect Wisconsin, also for Western Michigan. Not much for Detroit, but it will be mostly for Western Michigan. If Iowa gets anything, it will be light, as well as Northern Illinois or Southern Wisconsin. Once again, you may see it, but it probably won't stick because of daytime heating. And it's not going to be too far into the Midland, but it is going to affect some portions of Western Virginia. But most of it is going to be for Southeast Ohio, West Virginia, and the Northeast. And a lot of it is going to be intercoastal. So far, the coast is not showing any snowfall. Maybe Northern New Jersey. But the intercoastal will see major snowfall, even Vermont all the way up towards Maine. There's a lot of snowfall coming, but with these warm dew points so far, the coast is not seeing any snowfall. And that's according to the GFS, and GFS showed the heaviest. And when you look at your trouble pause, which is our weather up above, which depicts what happens down here to us, you can see our systems that do come through with our temperatures. But if you watch from the north, you can see that this is pretty much the last two systems we're going to get for a minute. Not really any cold weather coming anytime soon. Nothing like we're getting now. And when you look at your most unstable cape, convective available potential energy, you can see that the chances for tornadoes today really grow right when you get into the afternoon, especially around 1 and 2 p.m. Not only for Texas, Oklahoma, I think portions of eastern Kansas as well. Because you can see the strong Cape values as this storm builds up. This is your best chance for tornadoes with this strong Cape. But it does mild down sometime around 9 o'clock tonight. And the tornado chances should be gone at that point. Some storms will carry over towards Texas and northern Louisiana, but this will dissipate very quickly. Matter of fact, this cold front is going to push all the way to the south, southeast. And with these warm dew points, it is going to continue to bring some storms, mostly for southern Florida and into the Bahamas. But you can see it does carry over to the mid-Atlantic and the northeast as well. That's it for the forecast so far on these two systems and what can happen, guys. So if you really enjoyed the forecast, please hit that like button. Let people know to check out the video. That way they can see what's going on in their area. Thank you for your help. God bless you and your family. I do hope that you be safe during this event. I know with this high damage and winds, there is chances for power outages as well as that ice and the snowfall. Now, in my opinion, this is the best part of my channel. This is where I always praise God every day. Amen. And just to let everybody know, all you believers out there, and they actually did an investigation on the shroud that Jesus was buried in, and it is actually like 13, 14 feet because it was front and back of his body. And for one, it brings his height somewhere around 5'10", 5'11", while everybody back there was around 5'6", so he was almost the tallest figure around. But just like it says, he was scarred than any man alive. They did an update on what the data showed, and they actually showed that his sides, his front, his back, he actually got over 600 lashings. Can you imagine that much? I couldn't imagine 10 or 15, 600. Link is in the description if you wanna go check out the video. Thank you again for visiting my channel today. I hope y'all do really have a great and a very blessed day. Uh, I took this off so you can see what kind of storms it is. And matter of fact, I put it on regular thunderstorms so you can see all the thunderstorms that is happening for the Northwest as well as what's happening in the Midwest, coming down in the South with these bands that's gonna be stirring up maybe some chances for severe weather, even for tornadoes. And this will carry over and it will affect the Northeast as well. 
So this is going to be a big line of storms. It's not just going to be a major snowfall event. Now today, I want to read Psalm 6. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave who shall give thee thanks? I am weary with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. Mine eye is consumed because of grief. It waxeth old because of all mine enemies. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity, for the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all mine enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Amen. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I do hope you have a great and a very blessed day today. Just remember, tomorrow's Thursday. Friday is right around the corner. So stay strong, stay positive. Positive thoughts does bring positive results. Amen. All power, all glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Have a very blessed day. Beware of the power outages that will be coming with this storm.